All right, got it? Mm-hmm. All right, guys, this is how I make a uh, cappuccino at home. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not a, I don't have no, I have no particular expertise in this. I'm not a barista, never been a barista. <laughs> didn't work at Starbucks uh, as a part-time uh, job in college. As a matter of fact, Starbucks didn't exist when I was in college. <laughs> um, so anyway, my little setup is I used a Profitech Pro 700 um, and a Chiado E37J. Supposedly, this is the, the, the baby of the Chiados, but it's way overkill or at least really, really good for home. Uh, and I'm using a Colombian um, uh, bean. So um, let's get started. I'll go ahead, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go for the classic uh, two to one ratio of coffee to coffee grounds. In other words, I'm gonna use about 18 grams of coffee grounds and I'm gonna try to make about 36 grams of coffee with it. Uh, and then those those uh, ratios vary depending on person. For some people use a one and a half, you know, to one, but uh, I like the two to one. So the first thing I'm going to do is get get the beans, and I'm going to tear this little um, plastic uh, container that we just got at a restaurant uh, one night when they gave us some sauce to go. Um, so it's set on zero. So I'm going to go up here, and I've got my machine set on 11 seconds, so it should be kind of close. So let's see. close we are here okay we've only got a, a little over 15 grams so we got to put some more so all right let's see what we got here about 17 and a half so let's tweak it up just a little bit doesn't take much wow 18.75 all of a sudden that's how little that's how quickly this thing grinds but let me show you how little um, extra that is. Let's, let's take a little out. Okay, so that's not even 18. So let me put a little bit back in. So well, already 18.2. That's how little difference there is between 18 and 18.75. 18.2 is close enough. I mean, unless you've got a really you know, obsessive compulsive type personality, it doesn't have to be exactly 18. And, and um, also, when you make the coffee, there's nobody stopping at exactly 36 grams anyway. So, you know, it's gonna probably overshoot a little bit. So, this is good. So we have our coffee uh, ground. Now, the next thing I wanna do is kinda of set up my, uh, my uh, milk. And for, for that, I like to use half and half. Because I like a real rich, creamy um, cappuccino. And you know, this is coming from a guy who really doesn't like coffee all that much, actually. Um, uh, it's so I think that's why I like cappuccinos because by the time I finish with this this coffee this espresso it's gonna be more like a dessert right it's more like um, molten tiramisu rather than coffee <clears throat> I mean I don't like coffee like in the sense of like um, like I don't like salad but I do like salad dressing right? <laughs> so if I put enough salad dressing on salad hey I can say I ate a salad but it's no better for me than if I ate a bunch of french fries right so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna turn this coffee into something that's really yummy. Um, a lot of calories, but the good thing is that um, if you happen to be on a, a low carb um, uh, diet, uh, then we're gonna use this monk fruit sweetener, which has zero calories and zero carbs. Uh, so this is actually a, um, a, a low carb friendly uh, recipe, although it's quite a few calories. So anyway, uh, I used 150 mils of half and half. So my, my uh, uh, little cup, uh, my container here is marked. And I don't know if you can actually see it on the video. When I start pouring, it lights up a little bit. But that second mark from the bottom is 150 mils. So I'm going to get it where you can just still read 150 mils. And that's my little uh, formula here. And then what you do is you want the milk and the container to be really cold because the colder it is, the better it takes um, the, the air for frothing. So we'll put this back up and later on we're going to use some, a little bit of heavy whipping cream too. But I can just stick this in the, in the refrigerator while I make the coffee and that gives a chance uh, for the, the container, the milk pitcher, to actually get nice and cold. 
So we've got uh, the port filter already plugged into the uh, machine here, so it's the same temperature as the machine. Uh, so now we're going to put our coffee grounds in here. And um, I use this little funnel or this little collar here to kind of help keep it from spilling. Put that in. We'll kind of even it out just a little, like that. Give it a couple of good taps to get it settled. Then I use this little spinner um, distributor, your coffee ground distributor, which I got on Amazon. It's pretty cheap, uh, maybe 35, 40 bucks, something like that. And that distributes the coffee grounds inside very nicely, so that we end up with this nice flat um, level. Um, bunch of coffee grounds here and then I use this uh, this particular tamper because it's it's calibrated it's a spring inside that calibrates um, uh, to 30 pounds of pressure when it clicks so when you put it in the distributor has this thing sitting nice and flat so you don't have to worry about putting it you know uh, or tamping at an angle which is bad it's nice and flat so you just push it till I don't know if you could hear that but it, it clicked so I know I got exactly 30 pounds of pressure so now I've got a nice Puck in there, ready to make our coffee. And now, to get my 36 grams, I'm going to tear the, um, the cup that I use, which I didn't get out of the cabinet, this right here, and tear this back to zero. And I got this little scale on Amazon. It's pretty cheap. I don't remember what it cost, but probably 20, 30 bucks at the most. Uh, so now uh, our container here is, is teared at zero. So what I do now is I just open this up halfway and let just the pressure of the, the water the, from the, the home plumbing just um, uh, get through the coffee grounds enough to start the first drip. And then I'll kick the, uh, the pump on. And I'm using a bottomless portafilter, by the way. Uh, this takes a few seconds, but that's okay. It's a nice pre-infusion. Uh, time to get the coffee grounds all nice and um, so there it starts to drip so now I'll take the pump on and if you notice the, um, the machine starts counting down the number of seconds all right so now we're making our uh, espresso I'm shooting for about 36 grams and 36 grams done uh, somewhere around 25 to 30 seconds Turn it off. Okay, 36.24, and it is at 25 seconds. So in other words, I've got my coffee grounds um, dialed in about right. So you see a nice, um, nice crema on my uh, my coffee here. All right. So now we've got to froth our milk. All right. I've got my cup ready to go right here. Let me get the uh, the milk or the half and half rather back out. And now this stainless steel container is really cold, and so it kind of keeps the milk cold. And because cold milk, as I said before, it takes the frothing or the air a lot better than um, warm uh, or room temperature milk. Nice little damp towel here. And uh, you want to get the, the water out of your steam wand first, so you kind of open it up, keep that water out. Now, from what I understand, milk is its sweetest at about 140 degrees. If you get it too hot, you'll burn it. So, and I like, as I said, I like my coffee kind of very rich uh, and sweet. Um, let me kind of digress just a second. You can do this either way. I really like, if I can remember, to put one heaping teaspoon of this monk fruit extract in the milk. Give it a little stir. You don't have to worry, it's cold, so it's not the, 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 the sugar won't go into the milk all that well, but when it, that steam hits it, it will dissolve it very well. Okay, so now we've got some nice cold milk with a little monk fruit extract or our sweetener in it. So we get our wand out. I'll put my, um, if you um, want to come here, you, I don't know if you can see this, but um, it's milk that's been in the fridge for a while. So it should be around 40 degrees or so. It's coming down to 40. Uh, I don't have to let this uh, go, but now this steamer steams so quickly 
that even though I want the, the temperature of the milk to be about a, a little over 140, I stop the steaming at 135 because uh, the, the thermometer can't keep up with how fast this thing will heat the milk. So it'll overshoot by about 10 degrees. So if I stop it at 135, it'll shoot up to around the mid 140s, which is perfect for me. So you can see the temperature's coming down, coming down. It's about uh, about 50-ish right now. So now what we do is we put the, the wand in here and kind of lock it in place with the, the little pour uh, part of the, uh, the, the, the pitcher. And you get it kind of sort of kind of close to the edge. I don't know if you can see this. And just submerse the, the head of the uh, steam wand about, about halfway. And then we're going to click the um, or turn the steam on. All right, here we go. So now what you want to do is you want to keep it about just where you feel and hear. Uh, people describe it as kind of the sound of paper tearing, okay? You kind of hear that little, but that's air being injected into the, the, the half and half. Now about 80 degrees, I don't like to inject any more air. So you see, I raise it just high enough so that you don't hear that, that tearing sound anymore, but you do want to keep the milk swirling, all right? So here we are, and about 120 degrees, 135 right there. Okay, so we'll turn it off. And you'll see the temperature continues going up. I'll put this down here because you want to wipe the tip of your steam wand off and get a little steam through it. Just make sure there's no milk still stuck in there. Okay, got about nice and, nice and clean. Now, see my, the temperature is going up to right about 145. So the milk should be still nice and sweet. It doesn't start getting um, less sweet until you hit around 150 or a little over 150. So the temperature is just about right. And the way they describe the, what the milk should look like is it should look kind of like wet paint. Um, but for a latte, it looks more like paint. With a cappuccino, you're going to have more air in it. There's more froth. So it's a little frothier. So anyway, but if you tap it down, and I'll give it a little, little stir to kind of um, break up some of that froth on the top. And you should see it kind of has that nice thick kind of wet paint look. All right, nice and frothy. And since I've already got the sugar in it, or the sweetener, it's a nice sweet um, uh, you know, milk or half and half. So when I put it in my coffee now, it's already gonna sweeten the coffee somewhat. Okay, so now, uh, what I like to do is, uh, the way I like it, the, the amount of sweetness I like is one heaping teaspoon of the sweetener in the milk and one heaping teaspoon of this monk fruit extract sweetener in the coffee, all right? So, then we'll take our coffee, swirl a little bit, kind of break up some of that crema on the top so it can get all this little coffee goodness in here, pour it right in to the sweetener. And I like to mix it up a little bit. I don't think you really have to do this because probably the, the milk would do it. But see, it has a nice, see how it sticks to the cup back there, kind of like a, a wine will sort of stick to the edge of a, a glass. It uh, has kind of a, 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 um, a little thicker kind of consistency um, than say just water. So now for our cappuccino, what we want to do, unlike latte, you, you can't make all the, the pretty little designs because the milk is too thick, it's too much froth. So what you end up with is just a nice uh, a white spot in the middle. But anyway, you start pouring kind of high, like six, seven inches or so, right down the middle, like that. And when you get to the point where you kind of want the rest to be on the top just to look nice, you get much closer and you pour it on, and that way it stays on the top. So you get this nice, almost like meringue. Uh-oh. <laughs> you get this nice, like, kind of a maroon thing going on. So, anyway, very nice. Then I'm going to rinse the, uh, rinse my little fish out here. A little, a little housekeeping. All right, so there's our cappuccino. You can drink it just like it is, but I find that no matter how much I try, it's never hot enough. So I have two more steps. One is, I like about one tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. 
which gives it a real, real rich kind of decadent, um, uh, even smoother, uh, thick uh, quality to it. So I'll pour it right in the middle, about a tablespoon. And I've done this so many times, I know about what a tablespoon is. About that. Pour it right in the middle. Leaves a little nice little dimple. And then I put it in the microwave for 20, about 20 seconds. So I'll do 22 seconds since it's easier to punch. All right. So while it's doing that, <clears throat> I'll come over here and do a little, um, a little housekeeping. I've already got that rinsed out. I'll rinse this out. It's ready to go next time. Go ahead and knock my puck. You see the puck? It's called a puck for obvious reasons. It kind of looks like a hockey puck. Right? We'll just tap it off in the, the thing and see. You can see the fact that it's a bottomless portafilter here. I'm going to give it a little rinse. Then what I'll do is um, move my little scale and uh, just run a little water through. And uh, if, if, if you look, you'll see that it's coming out kind of a little brownish. And that's just taking some of the old coffee grounds off the, uh, the, the, out of the portafilter and off the screen inside the group head. Okay, so now it's all nice and clean, right? Just pour that away. And give another little quick rinse. Like that. And, you know, we're, we've got everything all cleaned up. Now we're pretty much ready for the next time. So now, let's go taste our cappuccino. And this size cup and that amount of everything it just has this kind of like perfect kind of look, huh? Nice and round. It looks like the the head of the Capuchin monks, which I think is one of the one of the places people say that the cappuccino got its name. It's from some Italian monks, the Capuchin monks. And you know how monks kind of uh, would shave their head so just the hair was left around the edge of their, their head like this, but the top of their head was hairless, so it was kind of white. So this kind of looks like the the top of their heads with the hair around the edge. And I think that's that's where this uh, cappuccino got its name. Also, some people say that the brown of the of the um, the cappuccino was the same color as the monk's robes. So, there's a couple of different explanations for where it got its name. Now, I'll take my spoon here and just, since the heavy whipping cream is still sitting kind of right in the middle, this is so full now, sometimes it's can be a little messy, but I'll just give it a little stir in the middle and that distributes that heavy whipping cream. And if you play around, if, if you kind of like suck up a little of the coffee here and play around with you, uh, around with you can kind of make it look kind of like some little designs. Like I'll, if you keep playing with you, I, I kind of think it looks like a, like a hurricane out in the Gulf since we live here in South Louisiana. It kind of looks like a, a hurricane in the Gulf on the, the hurricane maps. But anyway, um, it, it's so full, I really can't do all that kind of stuff. Also, you can do this little thing where if you want to you want to try to make a heart, you can kind of do this little number here and pull it across. And as you can see, after a couple of tries, you sort of get that little kind of heart shape or the tulip shape or, uh, I don't know, kind of sort of looks like a, a garlic to me. But anyway, <laughs> um, there you go. There's a cappuccino. So now, uh, let's see what it tastes like. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a good cappuccino. Even if you don't like coffee, you'll probably like this. So anyway, that's it from a novice. Um, I didn't sleep in Howard Johnson's last night, but I did watch about a hundred YouTubes uh, to kind of get this down. Then I spent a bunch of money on the machines here, but um, um, that machine is around $2,800 or so. <clears throat> the Chiado is about a thousand. Um, but I managed to find the machine on eBay for um, 1800 so I saved almost exactly a thousand so with a thousand I saved I bought my grinder so still a lot of money but um, I, I, I used a um, Gravel um, barista for about 10 years and, and you can actually get pretty close uh, with the barista 
but you, you just can't quite make that kind of cappuccino with the barista, but you can get pretty close and it's a whole lot less, you know, maybe four or 500 bucks instead of, you know, 3000 or 4,000 if you can't get this on a, a, a deal like I did on eBay. So anyway, that's it guys.